Hey everyone, today we thought we'd do a video of the BCF output from software such as Salibri Model Checker in this case um, and show you how that uh, BIM collaboration file or BIM collaboration format, that BCF file can really aid you in your design coordination and collaboration. Um, it's so much more intuitive than your historical um, legacy reports in a, in a dumb format such as uh, PDF or HTML which don't give you um, that much use when actually you've got hundreds and hundreds of clashes or hundreds and hundreds of design issues that you need to work through. Um, so in this instance I'm inside of uh, SMC, Salibri Model Checker. Um, I've just federated uh, a sample model, this is just the, uh, the Revit uh, advanced sample model so we've got MEP structure uh, and architectural models in here um, as you can see. We've just federated these together using their coordinates um, all from Revit and this is purely using the IFC. Um, so we have a federated model uh, and as well as viewing this inside of Salibri and being able to, um, to see exactly what's going on with the model inside of Salibri very very quickly uh, we've also got the ability of checking this model intelligently for issues for instance um, I've done it um, beforehand in this case just to save a little bit of time but I can go across to my checking tab and we can see that in this instance we have um, a load of issues that's been found in this file. Um, these are rules based issues so it's got an intelligent set of rules in here where it's checking the model for, for problems. And In this case it's finding issues um, inside the model which in some cases we've gone through and either rejected or approved dependent on what those issues are. Um, we're not here to show off that element of things today so we're going to skip straight over to the communication tab. And as you can see, on this communication tab, we have um, just a handful of things that we have identified inside this model, such as um, where we've got um, a visible void from outside of the building because the ceiling is too low. We've got instances where there are some, um, some misplaced uh, air terminals that have probably had their offset set incorrectly inside of Revit, um, gaps above um, walls that potentially shouldn't be there, um, comparisons between structural and architectural beams or in this case columns where we have uh, some significant differences between those and so on and so forth um, and historically to uh, to report out these kind of issues inside of um, a traditional piece of software or using traditional methods you would have um, JPEG reports you would have PDF reports HTML reports um, and whilst they're very good and they set about what it is that you want to, um, to notify people of very well, once you get a, a number of results, which on a live project it's not uncommon to get hundreds, thousands, if not tens of thousands of issues depending on what data drop you're on um, and the quality of the model, those formats just don't become that useful because in honesty, who's going to read through a report that's containing hundreds and hundreds of clashes on a piece of paper or on a PDF and then try and find those one by one using a grid reference or a room directly inside of Revit to fix them. It's, it's very unfriendly. So inside of software nowadays, and again we're using Salibri in this case, but uh, the same is true in other pieces of software from a coordination perspective as well. We can report out, and we can choose to report out our, um, our reports. In this case we're using our rule checks. And we can report those out into BCF, BIM collaboration format. Uh, in this case, we support both version 1 and version 2. So we're going to go out in version 2, which is uh, the latest version that is supported in this case. And we can say that we would like to save that report out. I'm just going to save that on my desktop so I can find it um, and just hit save. Now, um, that basically gives you a BCF file, which um, is openable in a number of ways. And what that will do is it will take um, all the information regarding these issues. I'll just pick this one as an example. So we have a screenshot. We have a description, we have a title, we have a number of components that this is relating to, some locations. It will take all of that information that's been found in your collaboration format or coordination format of choice, whether it's Navis or, or Salibri or whatever else you're using. It will take all of that information and it will store it in a BCF file. Now that BCF file is, uh, is quite lightweight. It's not particularly large. Um, it's only a, a, in this case 1.3 megs. It's not got loads of issues in there, but it's uh, it's, it's quite small. Um, that can be opened in a number of different ways. Today I'm going to show you opening that live on a common data environment. In this case, uh, Akinex. Uh, but this can be opened live inside of Revit, live inside of Tecla, um, any other authoring piece of software with the use of a plugin such as BIM Collab. 
um, or third party viewers as well. Um, in this case, let's just jump into Aconex. Um, I'm logged into my demo here um, and I've gone straight into the connected BIM environment. Now, uh, there's a number of ways that we can get models into this environment inside of Aconex. Um, in this case, I already have some models loaded. Um, but for your reference, um, if you do use Aconex, you can come across to your document register. Um, you can go and find uh, an IFC, for example, uh, this one here. And I could grab that IFC and using my tools, I could send that directly into my connected BIM. Um, so if you had a federated model, you could just select the individual IFCs that you want to work with and, uh, and get those as individual model stacks inside of the IFC. Again, to save watching um, a progress bar today, um, I've already done that. Um, so if we go across to our connected BIM viewer, we can see that I have, uh, in this case, these three model stacks. These ones we don't need to worry about in this case. Now our connected BIM viewer in Aconex is, uh, is very powerful. So we can upload um, individual model stacks to create a federated model. So we have the AEC model, the MEP model, and the structural model. These have a number of different settings, such as the ability to watch them for updates, download those revisions, um, upload revisions, or even change the settings of that model stack to define who can and who can't control that individual model stack. In this case, we can select the model stacks either individually to view those files one by one. So I could open the architectural model first. I'm using Firefox in this case, which is a little bit faster than the likes of Internet Explorer or Edge, um, but they all work just as well. Um, so we have the architectural model open. I can choose to federate in the MEP model just by clicking it over on the left-hand side. And I can also choose to federate in the structural model just by clicking it again on the left-hand side. So between what you saw a second ago in Celebri and what we have now inside of Connected BIM, um, we now have the same three models open. And as you can see, first and foremost, the viewer does a fantastic job of displaying the model. Um, it displays it very crisp, very clear, um, and it's quick considering it's working through a browser. Um, it's really easy to use. I've got a, a rotate on my left mouse button to orbit. On my right mouse button, I have a pan. And on my middle mouse button, I have a, a zoom, either by holding it down or by uh, using the scroll wheel, whichever works for you. Um, really intelligent, really easy to use. And I've also got the ability to come in and add sections, like, kind of like what you saw a second ago inside of Celebri. We can pick any flat face to start adding on sections and we can add as many sections as we want to, to, to really take a look at this file and, um, and see what's going on at any given point in that file. So it's a very good viewer. It works well and it's very, very fast. Um, in this case, we don't need the sections on, so let's just clear the sections down. Um, what we can do inside of this viewer is start um, isolating things. So we can say, okay, well, let's turn off the architectural model uh, and let's turn off the structural model just to show the MEP or let's turn everything off and bring uh, the structural model back on its own, then overlay the architectural model, then overlay the MEP model. It's very flexible, so it allows you to work the way in which you want to work within the model. Um, it, it really does work very, very well. We can highlight things to, 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 to show us exactly what it is that we're selecting. We can go through the hierarchy and, and highlight individual elements, turn them on, turn them off. Um, it's very, very flexible. So it's, um, it kind of works like most of the other viewers out there, but again, it's, um, it's particularly nice in this case. So with that model, once I've got it open, as well as viewing around, um, I can come and select things. Um, to get access to their BIM data. So I can come and select one of these beams, for example, and, uh, and access their level of information directly inside of the viewer. We can search through there if we want to. So I've wanted to search for a unique identifier. I just search for the word ID, and it will go and search through the object properties to find anything with that um, particular um, piece of information in there. So uh, again, that works really flexibly. We can link this to documents in this case, which exist within our document register. We can link it to email in this case, which we have sent through our mail um, tool set inside of Aconex. Um, so again, it's, 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 a, it's a nice tool set that works really well. Um, again, we're not here to demonstrate this functionality in its full. Um, but what I do want to show is how we can really use that BCF format to bring the project teams together. So on my comments button over here, I can choose to import. And this is purely looking for BCF files. So I can come in and choose this BCF that I've created from the Celebri Model Checker and choose to upload it. This will just take a few seconds. It's going to upload the file on its own and then it's going to go through and, uh, and interrogate that file 
and interrogate that file alongside the IFC that we already have loaded into the connected BIM environment. Um, and this is live, so this really shows you how quick this process is. It's a little bit slower once it starts looking into the file and actually seeing what we have in the file, what issues we have, and actually what we need to do with them. But again, it's, uh, it's pretty quick. Once that's finished, it gives you a, a successful message, and it shows you a number of issues. And again, if I flick back to Celebri, you'll notice that we have six issues here, and these are the exact same six issues that we have listed inside of Celebri. Directly inside of our um, CDE environment, accessible to everyone from architect, structural engineer, MEP engineer, sub, uh, subcontractors, clients, um, whoever needs to access it, we can go ahead and click any one of these issues, which again, as I showed you earlier, gives us the exact issue with the metadata from Celebri. Um, it gives us all of our comments that we added directly inside of Celebri um, and shows us information about what those are showing us. So in this case, we have a screenshot, again, from Celebri. Um, we can confirm that by seeing here. It is exactly the same screenshot showed directly inside of Aconex. That's really nice because it allows us to instantly see what's going on. But remember, we've got a 3D viewer. We have an intelligent application with the connected BIM. So what we can actually do is, rather than looking at a dumb screenshot, we can say, go and show me this inside the model. And this is where BCF really comes into its own, because that takes me in this IFC to that exact same view. In this case, it's created a section box, highlights the exact same components, the door, the terminal, and the flex, uh, the flex ducts, and shows me exactly what the problem is live within my CAD file or within my IFC. You imagine doing this inside of Revit, you imagine doing this inside of Tecla um, or any other system out there, Archicad, whatever it might be. A designer has the ability of seeing problems live in their environment, in which case, if I was the MEP designer in this case, I would just select a terminal, which actually is already selected for me, and just change its, uh, its elevation or its base offset. That would put it back to the right position in the file. Now, in this particular revision of the IFC, um, the terminal looks like it's in the right place. Um, although it's a little bit below the ceiling, so it's probably still a little bit wrong, but um, there could be an issue with the placement of the ceiling. It certainly lines up with uh, the other components that we have on there. Um, so in this case, it looks like it's resolved, but really powerful the fact that we can physically see our report in 3D. We can come over here and add comments. So uh, let's put seems to be fixed uh, in P3, so revision P3. Um, um, please check um, on next data drop inside of Celebri. Let's just add that reply. Uh, and actually we can come in here and start changing the status of this. So I could change that to closed or resolved. This is constantly updating that BCF. So then what you have the ability to do if you wanted to is take this on a full round trip. So whether you're adding these directly inside of the likes of Celebri uh, sorry, not Celebri, Revit or, uh, or, or Aconex or any other system. We can add all of our comments, change whatever it is that we want to change, and then we can actually select one or several of these and export them back out to BCF. What that means is I could come back into Celebri and update from a BCF to show a full round trip. So let's just take this one individual issue, let's export that back out to BCF. Let's save that on my desktop or in my downloads folder. Uh, let's go and um, head back into Celebri. And inside of Celebri, let's do a right click and update from BCF. Let's go and grab my, uh, my downloads folder. So let's just go into my downloads, go and grab the, uh, the BCF that we've just created, hit open. And what you'll see is again, um, the 3D. We're using the same IFC by the way inside of Celebri. So the IFC hasn't updated. But if we go to that issue, we can actually see under communication that if we scroll down, we have all of the comments that have been added directly inside of Aconex. Anything that we add inside of that system, whether it's inside of Revit, whatever it is, it will be added um, directly inside of your BCF. So again, imagine you can go from model checker to CDE to user. The user can fix the issue. That can be confirmed and clarified directly on the common data environment, such as Aconex. Um, during your next design review meeting. You can add comments and send them directly back to the guy that's checking the models inside of Navis or Celebri or whatever it is, and everything is logged 
auditable, traceable, uh, and fully intelligent using that BCF format. And if you ask me, that's a uh, hundred times better, if not a million times better than using a, a dumb reporting format such as uh, a piece of paper because it's actually intelligent and we can actually use it as part of a round trip. Um, we've shown it with Aconex because we're particularly excited about the way that Aconex works with these BCFs. Um, as you see, going from Salibri model checking to Aconex back to Salibri or into Revit or whatever it might be, it works really, really well. So. Hopefully that was intuitive. Um, hopefully that's given you an idea about why BCF is really important to BIM. Um, it's going to become more and more integral as we go on, um, especially if we look at what the government's trying to push with uh, Digital Built Britain in level three. Um, but it's, uh, it's very exciting. So um, hopefully that's useful and uh, we'll catch you next time.